In this video, we're going to be looking at uh, the idea of keeping up to date with developments in the arts. So there's a number of reasons why keeping up to date with your field and your sector is quite an important thing to be doing. The first of these is so that you can understand developing trends. So things that might be going on, maybe uh, certain fashions for things or certain ways that people are doing things. You also need to know about the economic situation, so the national and local economic factors that uh, come to play in the arts. Then thinking about emerging technology and the way that that technology uh, shapes and changes the way that audiences come in contact with art and also the ways in which you can show and present different things. And then the last of the reasons that we're going to be thinking about is how customer, client and audience needs and expectations shift and change over time. So if you're keeping up to date it means that you're in a better position to be developing new ideas and new projects, new ways of doing things and adopting new approaches. It also means that you can avoid unwanted surprises. So you can predict uh, the direction in which things are going a little bit better and you've got a lot more information to hand. You'll want to be thinking about how you and your organisation stay relevant to your audience and how you can tailor your offering, the things that you're making and showing and producing, to the needs and expectations and lifestyle of your audience. Most importantly, keeping up to date means that you can plan for future activity and to make that future activity as effective and useful as it can be. There are lots of different ways to keep up to date with things that are happening in your area. Some of these might be things like publications and reports and lots of different bodies, lots of different researchers will make these available often for free and often online to make it easily accessible. You'll need to be looking for market research and analysis, so studies that people are doing into the, into the things that your audience and the people around you are uh, spending their time on, what they're doing in their daily lives and also how they interact uh, with different activities or different cultural products. You could be looking for case studies, so examples of things that other organisations are doing and looking at what other organisations are doing in their activity and what their outputs are, in their different strategies for funding or working with different communities and audiences. You could be looking for self-evaluation by organisations. So um, when they have undertaken a project, they may also evaluate. So this could be inside your own organisation or it could be others, uh, you know, who are doing similar things in your area or in around the country. And then one of the most uh, valuable and important parts of how to keep up to date is through building your own networks. So these can be online and face to face and will include identifying people like mentors who can help you along the way. When we're talking about this idea of developing trends, we're uh, thinking about the research that people are doing so the quote on the screen here is from this Foresight report, the Museums in the Digital Age report, and they're talking about trend research taking a holistic view of the world. So covering medium to long term developments, so that could be kind of three to ten year developments within society, technology, economics, environment and politics. They're saying that trends can be used to develop corporate strategies, to identify emerging risks, so things that are changing and shifting all of the time, discovering new growth fields, so places, new, new uh, opportunities that you could exploit and things that you could do to make your organisation better, and exploring opportunities for disruptive innovation. 
So again, like disruptive technology, disruptive innovation is something that becomes game changing, something that changes the way that people do things quite dramatically. In this report, uh, they're splitting up some of these trends into different headings, which might be quite useful to think about. So they're looking at the way that museums need to diversify their content. This could be through collaborative curation. So this is a change that's happening uh, when people are using more and more online platforms, for example, things like Pinterest, where you can gather together a series of um, images or videos or clips or text of different kinds. Things about shifting cultural expectations. So how, what your audience or what the audience from a museum might expect from their visit and their experience will have shifted quite a lot in the last maybe five or ten years. So you'd need to keep up to date with what's going on there. Thinking about things like the maker movement, so more people are making uh, and that might be things like baking or sewing, it might be small scale electronics, uh, it could be woodwork, it could be, you know, the interest that people have uh, currently in making things. And thinking beyond objects. So for a museum, they're usually very focused on objects and uh, conserving objects in a collection. But actually their audience may have already moved past the point where objects are the most important thing. So another of these headings is focusing on immersive experiences, things like experience integration or smart environments, so environments that maybe react uh, to an audience or can become interactive in different ways. Thinking about experiences that are mobile and temporary and transient. So many of the things that we experience in our day-to-day -day lives are very quick moving, they're very fast paced. They're here today, gone tomorrow kind of things. The last of the headings that they're looking at uh, when they're looking at these different trends that are developing are things to do with sustainable and open spaces. So when we're addressing the issue of climate change, for example, you might need to be thinking of climate ready design for the buildings that we use as museums, the positive impacts of design and integrating those public spaces into their communities. So you can see how a report like this foresight report would be quite useful to you. It gives you a series of keywords, it gives you maybe names for tendencies that you could identify or that you might have observed, and it gives you another way to talk about and think about new ideas. When we're looking at the economic situation, uh, there's an organisation called the NCVO, and that's a third sector organisation. So that's looking at uh, charities and community interest companies, things like that. Uh, and they start to examine different key strategic drivers. So again, they're giving names and giving titles to things that we probably observe quite a lot. And these are all things that they think are important for the voluntary sector. So you can see there's quite a list of these. They've got over a hundred on the website and they're all about different attitudes or shifts in the way that people are thinking about things like maybe value for money or changes in the housing markets, uh, what's happening with personal debt, the increase in people becoming interested in starting different social enterprises and ideas like the free economy. So you can see how uh, looking at the reports and looking at the writing that's published by an organisation like this could apply to thinking about your own organisation. We've also got uh, publications by people like the Arts Council. So they've set up a self-evaluation framework for organisations with a set of different questions that organisations might ask themselves. So when they're thinking about the impact of the global or national uh, economy 
on their own organisation and the things that they're doing and they're providing. When we're thinking about emerging technology, there are lots of different ways that we can keep up to date with this as well. Uh, there's a strand of Google called Think with Google, which publishes a range of different research information about trends in the usage of new technology, which is broken down by country or uh, by, through different headings, different associations. They're looking at things like the use of mobile devices, how people are engaging with marketing and advertising, and the motives for engaging with content. So although they might be providing this for uh, companies that would be using this information commercially, you can see how quite quickly you could also adapt this to think about your own arts organisation. They also published the Consumer Barometer, which is um, almost real-time data, and it's showing things like the uh, frequency or uh, ability of different people to access different technologies broken down by things like their age range or their locality. So you can see and you can compare uh, maybe with different countries or with different age groups or demographics how people are using emerging technology, how people are using this to go online to explore uh, different activities through their devices. It's also worth keeping up to date with different blogs and conferences and in events online. So I've just picked out three specific ones here. Uh, the native websites has lots and lots of different research that's gathered together through um, a digital research and development fund for the arts. So that will be one that is looking at case studies, uh, that's looking maybe of the application of technology by different arts organisations. TED as well is a, a useful um, international website which brings together a series of talks and a series of writings about how um, education, entertainment, design, how all of these things uh, impact on our daily lives and the trends that are starting to emerge there. PopTech is another website that brings together recordings, video recordings usually from conferences and events where speakers are talking about their own experiences and their own observations on how emerging technology is shifting and changing our daily experience. You also need to pay quite a lot of attention to trying to understand audiences' needs and expectations. So we've looked previously at uh, the arts audience insights that were um, gathered together by the Arts Council. And this is a good example of the type of publication that you'll find it useful to research. So in this particular publication, they're looking at audience segments, identifying who engages with the activities that an organisation runs and their needs and expectations and identifying areas for development. So understanding your audience's needs and expectations will allow you to understand how to make better products, better outcomes uh, for those audiences in the future. There's another useful um, publication online which is called Taking Part and this is prepared by the Department of Culture, Media and Sports in partnership with three different organisations with the Arts Council England, with Sports England and English Heritage and that's got lots of information about how people are spending their leisure time so the types of engagement and reasons for engagement with the arts that are associated with leisure uh, with kind of casual activity and maybe also with informal learning or education. We've also touched briefly before on apps like Artery uh, which allow audience members to feed back in real time to arts venues and arts organisations about what they, f what they um, have experienced from uh, attending an event or going to an exhibition or maybe participating in a workshop. So you can see on this little diagram here uh, different questions pop up 
for the app's users. So asking things like, in this example, maybe this event made you think differently about things. And then there's a sliding scale so that uh, users of the app can say whether they agree or disagree to whichever strength uh, with each of those feedback criteria. So leaving feedback like this has happened, you know, people have been gathering this for a long time, often through surveys and questionnaires. And I suppose an app like this just allows you to do it in a different way. So it allows you to collect that type of information that, that will let you understand your audience's needs and expectations better.